So you got some motion capture data and you want to clean it up with Cascader. Not a problem. So when you are cleaning up mocap, phase one is just getting the data into the software. And you can get your motion capture data from any source you like. Personally, I like to use Quick Magic because that allows you to just dump any 30 second video you want and within five minutes, it'll translate it for you into an animation, which gives us a great base to start with. So for example, I like this kick. So after Quick Magic translates it, we download it and open two new scenes in Cascader. Now I am using the Unreal 4 mannequin, so we'll set the second scene to that. Then we'll go into the first scene and drag in our FBX and say no to drugs. Then go to bone mode and extend the timeline all the way. Then left click to drag and select it all, double click the pelvis, then up under edit, copy interval, go to the other scene and go to bone mode and extend the timeline all the way. Then left click to drag and select it all, double click the root and then under edit, paste interval. Now go to ball mode, click the pelvis, and on the top right, click this to unbake the data, which will turn it all into a normal keyframe animation. So now that everything is here, let's start deleting the parts that we don't want. So you can highlight all the junk and press Alt F to remove it. Sometimes you might have to press Alt F twice, but regardless, I just want the last part of the kick. So this is all I'm gonna keep. Now we need to move the character to the center and make sure that it's facing the right direction, which is forward. So to do that, select all the frames, then click this button here, and then click the center of mass, and make sure that it's aligned over the exact middle of the scene. Then rotate it to face forward, and then you can click this button again to disable it. Now we're going to enter phase two, which is rough draft cleaning. Really all we're doing at this point is deleting unnecessary key frames. If you see these funny red frames, you can remove them by pressing Alt F twice or clicking the blue key button here. And then you just go through each key frame and just make sure that they look normal. Things that you probably want to look for when you're doing this is just make sure that the head is not bent at a funny angle, make sure the fingers aren't broken. If something is broken, like the knees or the elbows or the hands, you can just select them and press Shift Z to revert them to default. Usually that'll fix it most of the time, but if it doesn't, you can always manually drag things around until it's perfect. Once you've done that, we are going to enter phase three, which is emphasis. So after you've got all the basic things fixed up, now we get to decide what parts of the animation that we want to exaggerate. So when you're doing this, it's best to think of the animation in five parts. The beginning, the wind up, the primary frame, the cool down, and the end. Every human movement is made of these five things. Now, when you are animating specifically with motion capture, then a lot of the hard work has already been done for you because there's a high chance that the animation is already following the laws of physics, momentum, center of mass, and weight shifting by default. And Cascader uses AI to further calculate the natural realistic movements of the key frames. So when we are clean in this, we get the benefit of just choosing what parts of it we want to keep or emphasize to make it clear to the viewer. Generally, in my experience, the things that you might want to emphasize are the windup and the main frame. So what I'm going to do is make the character crunch down a little low during the windup so it contrasts with the main frame after the kick is fully extended. And we're going to make sure that that kick pose is extremely clear. So I'm just going to raise the foot a bit. Okay, now something cool that we can do once we've got the poses down is control the duration between each keyframe. Now this kind of depends on your own personal style. I like to have a very aggressive windup and slightly cinematic keyframes. So I'm gonna click on the windup area and press the subtract key to shorten the amount of frames here. And on the main cooldown, I'm gonna add some keyframes with the plus key to make it a bit longer and dramatic. And honestly, that's kind of really all we need to do. At the end of this phase, it's always good to export the animation and test how it looks in the actual game. So we can click here to snap to auto physics and then export the animation to Unreal. It's using the Unreal 4 mannequin. So once it's done, all we gotta do is right click, replace the skeleton to the Unreal 5 mannequin, and now we can drag it to our Unreal 5 character. Cool, it works. Now, the rest of this video is bonus. The patrons requested that I share anything in my bag of tricks that I thought might save you time. So this next segment just contains some of the most useful techniques that I've found in Cascader that help me manipulate the animation more precisely. So the first thing that I've found helps a lot when Cascader doesn't realize that the feet are supposed to be touching the ground is you can actually click the foot and up under scene settings, we can go down to fulcrum point and just enforce it and it'll turn green. And now you can see that the feet are properly planted on the ground during the physics calculations. The next tip I have is lock in the joints. If you are moving stuff and there's parts of it that you really don't want to move, you can select them and press R to lock them. And now when you move things, they will be unaffected. When you're done, you can just select them again and press R to unlock. If you ever wanted to extend an animation, an easy way to do it is just to select the last frame, shift middle click to duplicate it, and then change the frame before just a little bit to get something like this. 
You can select all the children of a bone by double clicking it. For example, if I wanted to rotate everything on the torso, I can double click the rib cage and now everything above that bone is selected. If you ever see that the physics is not following your keyframes and you really want it to. For example, you can see that the physics calculation and the actual keyframe are at different angles. You can set this as a priority frame by clicking here, which will force it to the exact same pose as your keyframe. At any point, you can right click to change the pivot point of the gimbal. So if I want to rotate the entire character on the position of the foot, I can right click this and now when I rotate, the body will travel around the foot. And if you find yourself struggling to keep the feet position consistent, let's say for example you wanted the foot on this frame to be the exact same position as the frame before it, you can select the foot and up here under the tween machine, you can move this all the way back and now it will be in the exact same position as the frame before it. You can also do this forward so it's in the exact same position as the keyframe afterwards. And lastly, if you have multiple keyframes frames and you want something like the hand to be here at the beginning but here at the end you can select all the related frames change this to bezier mode and at the beginning set its position then at the end set its position and it will now automatically place the hand correctly for all the frames in between and when you put all that together you can manipulate the animation to do virtually anything you want so hope that helps and as always hope you have a fantastic day and i'll see you around